Passenger numbers on the high-speed rail link between London and the Channel Tunnel are only a third of what was originally forecast, according to a committee of MPs. The Public Accounts Committee says optimistic predictions about the route have left taxpayers with a debt of nearly £5 billion. It's warning that the same could happen with the new high-speed line planned between London and Birmingham. Well, Margaret Hodge, who chairs the Common Spending Watchdog, the Public Accounts Committee, joins us now uh, from Westminster. Margaret Hodge, welcome. Uh, could you, you explain these figures to me, please? I'm a bit puzzled. Well, you say that the taxpayer has been landed with a debt of nearly four, uh, nearly five billion pounds, but the Department of Transport say that it was delivered on time, on budget, and the sale raised two billion pounds for taxpayers. Well, if you look back at when we first let the contract to uh, the company to build the line and run it, at that time, they just were over-optimistic about how many passengers they'd get on the line. We then nationalised it, if you remember, and then we started again and we did a new business plan. And again, they were over-optimistic about the number of passengers that they would get on the line. Now, it is true, we've got a good line and it was built on time and in budget. But because they were over-optimistic, we, the taxpayer, have had to pick up the bill, particularly for the construction of the line, where originally they said that uh, uh, it was going to be, be paid for out of the fares because more people would journey on the, go on the journeys and therefore more fare income would come in. And our concern is this isn't the first time that's happened. It's the same thing on the East Coast Main Line where they were very over-optimistic about numbers and the taxpayer then has to come in and subsidise. And as we look forward to HS2, the new high-speed rail link between London and Birmingham and the North, we are uh, determined that the government should not repeat this over-optimism on passenger figures. Let's talk about HS2 in just a second, but what do you think led to this over-optimism about passenger numbers? Well, I think they uh, hadn't really got it that the airlines were going to come in with cheap affairs, so people would choose still to fly to Paris and to Brussels rather than using the line. They hadn't realised that the ferries were actually going to cut their prices and therefore become more competitive. And they'd taken an optimistic mm -hmm. view on, what, on GDP growth, and they thought that would bring more passengers than it actually did. How appropriate, though, is it to apply the same thinking to the... Uh, second high-speed rail link between London and Birmingham, given the fact that, as the Department of Transport say, their forecasting uh, methods have improved enormously since uh, the 1990s. Well, I'm sceptical of that, and I think it's really important. Public money is very tight. We're talking about £32 billion, and there may be alternatives. So let me say I'm sceptical about their ability to uh, uh, be, uh, really be realistic, and I, we've got evidence of that to start with. They've said on HS2 that the chart, the fare we pay, will be the same on the high speed as it will on the normal. Now, the moment you take that assumption, you assume more everybody will want to go high speed. You'll want to get there sooner. But the reality is that it'll probably be cheaper to go on the normal. And that will mean that some people will choose to go a little bit slower and pay a little bit less. That's one bit of the over-optimism. The other thing is they're not rigorous in their cost-benefit. Let me give you an example there. They assume when you go on a high-speed rail link, you do nothing. You're completely unproductive. And anybody who travels by train knows that actually it's a really good time to be productive. And they assume that if you're a passenger on the high-speed rail link, you're, m you're a much more productive person. You're worth £54 an hour. Whereas if you're a commuter coming in from Surbiton, you're only worth £7 an hour. I don't think that's a rigorous comparison. And it just it, 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 it puts it all... Uh, it makes an over-optimistic assumption of the cost-benefit of high-speed rail link and therefore gets investment there. And let me just say this. It could well be that a more sensible thing for helping the cities in the north are two things. We could look, for example, at investing in broadband so you can have more video conferencing rather than people travelling by train. And it could be that we ought to think about linking the cities in the north or indeed linking Bristol to Liverpool. And that would help the cities in the north more than linking them to London, which would only suck more economic activity back into the capital. Much to think about, Margaret Hodge. Thank you very much.